Uh, William P. Whipple uh, was a pioneer in giving. Uh, he was a mentor to many, uh, including his grandson, William P. Whipple III. It's my pleasure tonight to introduce Bill Whipple and to ask him to reflect on his grandfather. Bill is a fine Iowan. Born, raised, and educated in Cedar Rapids, his musical talent was recognized at an early age. He started his piano career at age four. He advanced quickly, earning degrees from the Manhattan School of Music in New York City. Uh, he began his formal studies at the University of Cincinnati Conservatory of Music, where he received the Cleft Music Club Award. He is currently pursuing his Doctor of Musical Arts degree in Piano Performance and Pedagogy at the University of Iowa. He was the recipient of the University of Iowa's Performance Fellowship, that's the School of Music's highest honor. And he's also served as a teaching uh, assistant in their program in the area of piano. He has been the featured soloist with a number of symphonic orchestras as well as being the featured artist on Iowa Public Radio. Bill is a competitive tennis player, but his really big news is he plans to be married later this year. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bill Whipple. Uh, thank you uh, for that kind introduction, Mr. Evans. Uh, you know, the United Way tried to find the most intelligent orator in all of Cedar Rapids to speak to you tonight, but that person turned them down. <laughs> they then tried to find the most witty individual in all of Cedar Rapids, but that person turned them down as well. Finally, in a last-ditch effort, the United Way attempted to attain the best-looking, most handsome speaker in all of Cedar Rapids, and that's when I thought to myself, I can't turn them down three times in a row. <laughs> um, so here I am. All kidding aside, I'm very happy uh, to be here tonight to talk a few minutes uh, about one of my favorite subjects, uh, my grandfather, William Perry Whipple II. Preparation for this speech has been a very hard thing. It is virtually impossible to summarize my grandfather's life and message in a few minutes, so I won't even try to do so. However, I'd like to share a few personal stories. One of the most important messages that my grandfather relayed to me was when he told me, Strive to make assiduous steps to not always be a taker. Try to give back equally as much, if not more, in relationship to what you gain in life. I studied his phrase for a few moments, and after I looked up what the word assiduous meant, this was a common result after conversing with my grandfather, I asked as a bright-eyed, inquisitive young college student, how can I, as a full-time student with no outside job, give back to society? My grandfather immediately replied, it's not always about giving back financially. Give me a few days and I will tell you how you can give back. A few days later, uh, I returned and my grandfather instructed me in what I was to do. My grandfather stated, why don't you provide piano accompaniment for your musical peers free of charge? And that is exactly what I did. While at the University of Iowa, I donated my time to a number, number of these side projects. One per semester, I accompanied student clarinetists, trombonists, and singers to name a few. I accompanied their weekly rehearsals and lessons as well as any recitals or exam juries that they had to perform. My grandfather believed that everyone can find a way to give back within their normal daily work. My grandfather truly practiced what he preached. In 1971, he sold his insurance agency. In 1972, he continued uh, to work, mainly giving lectures and speeches. In 1973, he formally announced his retirement. And in 1974, his relationship with the Hall Prine Foundation began. What most people do not know is the fact that my grandpa never took a salary from this point forward. My grandpa told me most people will never know this, and that is fine, but I consider one of my greatest achievements to be the fact that I haven't accepted a salary since I sold the insurance agency. My first reaction to this as an inquisitive grandson was, why wouldn't you take your salary, give it all away to charity, and take a tax write-off? My grandpa's reply to this was, I wanted to give back in a way that truly had no strings attached. Recently, I began to research this period in my grandpa's life in a bit more detail by looking at a spreadsheet that my grandpa prepared that showed his annual net worth from the year 1935 to 2010. I realized two things. First, in the year of his agency sale, 
he didn't have a lot of money. Take into account the inflation of the late 60s and early 70s, he really didn't have a lot of money. It wasn't until 1985 that his financial formula that he constructed uh, decades before, similar to the modern day Morningstar uh, consider buy and sell price formula, started to come to fruition with the happenings of Western casualty insurance. The second realization was, the, was that his net worth actually went down quite a bit uh, from 1973 to 74. Both of these realizations made his decision to not receive a salary all the more remarkable. My grandpa was a humble servant that followed what some learned in confirmation class, the importance of being a good steward, a steward of your time, of your treasure, and of your talent. In a column from the local Cedar Rapids paper entitled Wise Why in Cedar Rapids, the interviewer asked my grandpa, if a rocket ship were taking off to the moon or Mars for the first time tomorrow, would you like to be on it? An interesting question uh, taking into account, it was asked in 1956. My grandpa's reply was simple, no, I have no desire to leave Cedar Rapids. I'm very happy here. I like to be away temporarily once in a while, but I have never considered leaving permanently. So it was no surprise that after my grandpa passed away that he left his charitable gifts to 10 local nonprofit organizations. What was unique was the way in which he left the funds as an endowment. Right before entering into hospice and about three years before his passing, my grandpa used to comfort family by saying, I'm ready to see what's on the other side. I don't want anyone to cry for me. I'm not Methuselah. I can't live forever. His endowment gift, for, however, will, if managed properly, live longer than Methuselah's 900 plus years, steadily growing alongside the increasing needs of the community that he loves so much. All of us in the Whipple family feel very grateful and appreciative to the United Way uh, for this honor. Thank you. For us, the most, and most certainly for my grandpa, it is not about the name attached to a circle or society. What would make us the most proud, my grandpa included, is if his past example inspires others to give. Uh, that's what's important. I'd like to close with the last question posed to my grandpa in the Wise Why article for his response is as pertinent today as it was back in 1956. The interviewer asked, what does Cedar Rapids need most? My grandpa replied, greater awareness of civic responsibilities by more people. It seems we have the same old horses out for every fire. Conversely, however, one reason we have been successful is because we have many civic-minded people, but we can always use more. I think Cedar Rapids is one of the most giving uh, communities of any that I have ever known. And that's what makes me very happy to be here. I started uh, business in 1935. I was very interested in uh, all activities that would help the community. It's just been my nature to be interested in that. I was recruited by someone to help raise money for the United Way, which was known then as the Cedar Rapids Community Chest. And I remember very well, uh, the goal was $250,000. And I guess maybe that was just as difficult to raise in those days as the goal is today. Giving is a very difficult thing. And uh, uh, to select uh, individual organizations on your own, you can make all kinds of errors and mistakes. It, it's just wonderful to have that work done for me. Giving is almost a religious experience. I get a feeling uh, of happiness that I really have not got in any other way. And I can't explain it, but uh, it seems to me the more uh, I am able to give, the more is given to me. Well, Bill, we miss him every day, and as a token of uh, appreciation to your family, to you, to your father and your grandfather, We'd like to give you this etched sketch of that uh, tree with a lot of apple seeds. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.